Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I like that smile, Mia. Hey, Eva. Hi. Okay, it is what day today? Tuesday, July 28, 2020. Okay, today we're going to hear again a parable from St. Matthew, chapter 13, verses 36 to 43. This is another parable our Lord our, explains to the disciples. It is another parable related to seeds. Okay, remember the other day we were talking about the sower and the seed, right? And the seed being the word of God that falls on different types of ground, right? Good ground, thorny ground, sandy ground. Today, we're going to hear again about the sower and the seed, but this time, our Lord uses a different image for the seed. The seed, <clears throat> in this case, in this, kind, in this parable today, is about the children of God. The seed is the child, are the children of God. <clears throat> okay? <clears throat> it's not the word of God this time, but the children of God. Okay? The seed that comes from the fruit of God. Of the tree of God. So that's the image that we have to have in mind today. That is the that is the kind of seed that Jesus is talking about here. Okay? So after dismissing the crowd, his disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the seeds. Sorry, the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the Son of Man. Who is the Son of Man? Jesus, right? The field is the world. The good seed, the children of the kingdom. See, so there he makes a distinction now. The good seed is the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. The weeds. So remember, this parable, this explanation comes from the parable where uh, the good seed and the weeds sprang up together in the same field, right? And then the disciples uh, the, uh, uh, were asking, uh, no, oh, the, the, the sower said, oh, an enemy has done this, right? To put weeds in the field. An enemy has done this. So here our Lord is explaining now what the weeds and the seeds are all about. Okay, let's continue. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy... Who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age. So the end of the age means the end of the world. There's going to be a harvesting. Okay? That's going to be the harvest season. When the crops are going to be gathered in one place. And the weeds are also going to be uprooted but gathered and burned. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are the angels. Hey, the reapers are the angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all those who cause others to sin, and all evildoers. They will be thrown into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous who are born out of the seed will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. Okay, so we have the, the explanation, right? The, the crops grow in the same field where the weeds grow. It's all a question of who sowed what, right? So the good seed was sown by the Son of Man, Jesus Christ. These are the ones who follow after the heart of God. These are the people who have, who have lived their lives according to their nature as children of God. And the weeds are those who followed the way of the devil, 
because the devil was their origin. The devil was their uh, uh, sower. Okay? Now, uh, let's... Uh-oh. <laughs> What's wrong with Eva? Now, some Protestant uh, uh, sects, by the way, okay, just parenthetically, some Protestants take this particular gospel to mean that there is such a thing as predestination in life. Right? Uh, they misinterpret this gospel to, to, uh, to mean that there is predestination. That there are some people who are really destined for heaven and there are some people who are not destined for heaven. Okay? That is very wrong. Okay? That is a very wrong interpretation. What the correct interpretation of this is such that the good seed, yes, there is good seed, but the good seed are those that are not predestined, but rather have, uh, have uh, 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 been disposed, they have been disposed to live their lives according to their nature, which is that of being children of God. See, everybody was, is a child of God. There was no such thing as predestination from, from the beginning. Where, where God decided, okay, these bunch of creatures go to heaven, those bunch of creatures go to hell. No, God is, is all good and He, out of His goodness, created everybody and everything good, especially man, was created in the image and likeness of God. So He could not have predestined some men to go to heaven and some men to go to hell. Well, that's very wrong, right? Anyway, but that's a parenthetical explanation just to... Uh, um, make you understand that this is one of the errors of some Protestant uh, brethren of ours. Yes, Mia. How do weeds turn into good plants? Well, uh, no, they don't. They won't. But, but here, uh, what our Lord is really wanting us to understand here is not so much the difference between the good seed and the weeds. What our Lord wants to teach us here is the lesson of the final judgment. See? He is trying to teach us and trying to explain to us that at the end of the age, this is what's going to happen. So he is giving us a picture of what is going to happen in the final judgment at the end of the age, where there is going to be a judgment, where our Lord is going to come again. See, His second coming, which He has already promised to us. He is going to come again to judge the living and the dead. Very good, Shabelle. Where do we get that? From the? Catechism. Yeah, from the catechism. But what prayer do we say that reminds us about the judgment of the living and the dead at the end of time? In the? In the creed. See? Very good. Sophia, right? In the creed, we are reminded that it is a dogma of faith. The final judgment is a dogma of faith. It's a teaching that we have to believe in. That our Lord is going to come at the end of the age in order to judge the living and the dead. And this is the scenario that's going to happen. Wherever you are, whether you're alive at the time of the last judgment or you have died even centuries before that, the dead would rise from their graves. And our Lord will come here. Yeah, our Lord will come okay, in His full glory in order to judge us a second time. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> Why a second time? Because if we have died prior to this, then we would already have had what is called our Particular judgment. Very good, Joseph, right? When we die before the final judgment, we're going to have a particular judgment first. Particular because it only refers to us. Okay? So we will already be judged according to our uh, deeds, thoughts, actions, words, and everything we do and we have done in life. Right? That is what's called a particular judgment. We are all going to be judged. And then at the end of the age, at the end of the world, we're going to have a second judgment. That's going to be what's called a general judgment. And this parable is a picture of that. Okay? Now, you know, 
Doctrinally, that's what I wanted you to, to, to understand. That there would be such a thing as judgment. And this is what this parable is all about. But what should we do? Okay? The, the, the question to ask ourselves is, what should we do now if there's going to be this judgment? What should you do? Hmm? What do you think should you do? Huh? Be prepared, Joseph. Very good. Be prepared. Same thing that we do every time we need to take a test, right? The judgment is like a test. So if you go to school, right? If you go to school, there's always a test in school, right? Even us at home, even while we homeschool, I always, of course, give a test to my children. Not necessarily the paper and pencil test, right? In our homeschooling uh, practice, we, we, we do plenty of oral testing, okay? where I test them at random. That can, that's like your particular judgment, right? When I just ask you at random and I tell you, okay, bring your books here and let's test you with science, with math. That's like your particular judgment. See, that's the way you, un you have to understand it. And then the general judgment is like, you know, at the end of a month when we, when we test uh, you in all of your subjects, that's like the general judgment. So we are all facing these tests. And what do you do in school to prepare for tests? What do you do? Huh? You study and you review, Joseph. You review, right? You review what you know so that you can more or less pass a test. Okay? So we, in our own lives, we also have reviews. We have reviews, and we in fact do reviews often. What are our forms of reviews in our spiritual life? What do we do every day? Examination. Huh, Sophia? Examination. Examination of conscience. Okay? Examination of conscience, which we do every night. Okay? Every night in our own home, we do what's called the examination of conscience, the practice of examining our conscience and asking ourselves a few questions that I'm going to be sharing with you. The questions we ask ourselves in the examination of conscience are what? Number one, how did I? How did I love today? Number two, how did I care today? Right? Number three, Ava, huh? How did I serve today? Serve Number four. How did I excel, how did I excel today? Excel. Oh, yes, Eva. And number five. How did I? Oh, what's the fifth question? How can I do better tomorrow? See, those are the five questions we ask ourselves every evening before we go to bed. We gather as a family in the family room. Okay? And, ev and, and then everybody asks the, the same questions. How did I love today? How did I love my neighbor today? How did I love God today? How did I express that and show that concretely in the way that I prayed, in the way that I worked, in the way that I, I, I uh, conducted myself today? How did I serve today? Or first, how do I care? How did I care today? Did I only care about myself? Did I only pay attention to my own needs or did I care about the concerns of others? And that caring can be shown also in several ways, like in praying for others, right? Or paying attention to their needs, okay? Then third question, how did I serve today? Okay? Did I go out of my way in order to help my siblings, my brothers and sisters in their things, not in always attending to only my things, but to extend myself, to serve the others. Okay? So, how did I serve? How did I excel today? Okay? How did I excel? Did I really do things in excellence, in the spirit of doing things the best way I can? Or did I just, you know, uh, go about my day lazily, complacently, and just, ah, whatever, just you know, dragging my feet to go to work or do what I need to do without really the, the enthusiasm to serve and excel, to really do your best, right? Because what, what, what is it 
what is it for if you went to work or you uh, did things at home or, or did your chores just, you know, for the heck of it? What good did that bring to you? Right? Uh, but if you do your work always in, 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 a, in a manner that you seek excellence and perfection, okay, then you're doing a good work. You are, you are doing what is expected of you. And then the last question, what can I do better tomorrow? Okay. We try to ask ourselves, okay, in all of these four, other, four items I've asked myself uh, prior, in which of these areas can I do better tomorrow? Where can I improve myself? That's always what we are after, improving, improving, improving ourselves, right? So that every day we really get better, battle ready and prepared to wage the war of doing good in the world by improving ourselves okay? and sanctifying ourselves so that at the end of the age, when that time comes, that we are going to be judged by God, we will be found worthy to be brought together with all the other good people the other saintly people in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? So one lesson we could learn here is do an examination of your conscience every day, every day, every day. That is part of being ready for the final judgment and your particular judgment, by the way, because if we all die, as many other people have died before the final judgment, we will have our particular judgment. So we better be ready. And then, of course, two other things, two other things that we can, we can talk about regarding preparation would be, besides doing a good examination of conscience, we also avail of what sacrament in order to have our sins forgiven? Confession, confession Mia, very good, right? So confession is a good way to prepare also for this final judgment, uh, where we can ask our Lord in the in the uh, font of uh, uh, the sacrament of grace uh, through the confession that we could be forgiven from sins committed after baptism. Okay? And then, of course, after cleaning our souls in confession, we, the third prescription is we try to live a virtuous life. We try to do good. We try to follow the commandments. We try to, uh, to, to live the virtues that are expected of us as children of the good seed, okay? as being part of the good seed and the good tree that Jesus Christ is. Okay, so examination of conscience, good confession, hopefully at least maybe once a month for most people, sometimes more often than that, we, you know, before this whole pandemic struck us, we, uh, it was a practice for us to go to confession in our own family every week. That's how much I think we all need it. <laughs> uh, but things have been, uh, things have changed a little bit since this pandemic, you know. Uh, so we, we try to go when we can. And then the third prescription, live a virtuous life. Okay? Because that is what's going to help us sustain the efforts of living a good life on earth so that we will always be prepared for our particular judgment and the last judgment. Okay, that is it for us, folks, today. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Eva. Bye. <laughs> Eva's still eating. Okay, bye-bye.